five signs of a bad transmission speed sensor, causes, fixes, and replacement cost. Hey guys, welcome back. If your car's been acting weird lately with rough shifting, cruise control not working, and the speedometer doing the cha-cha, don't jump straight to blaming the transmission just yet. You might be dealing with something a lot simpler, a bad transmission speed sensor. And that's good news because compared to replacing an entire transmission, fixing this little guy can save you hundreds, if not thousands. So in this video, we're breaking down what a transmission speed sensor actually does, the signs that it's going bad, what causes it to fail, and how you can test and replace it. Stick around to the end, we'll even talk real-world costs and what you can do to prevent this problem down the line. Pro tip, if you're dealing with rough shifting in a Subaru, check out our video on 5 signs of Subaru transmission problems, bad CVT symptoms and fix. Links in the description, let's get into it. In plain English, this sensor tells your car how fast your transmission is spinning. That info goes to your car's computer to help it shift gears properly, run cruise control, and show your speed on the dash. Most cars have two. One on the input shaft, tracks how fast power comes in, and one on the output shaft, tracks how fast power goes out. When either one starts failing, your car starts guessing. That's when things get messy. Jerky shifts, wrong gear timing, speedo acting up, you name it. If you're seeing a check engine light too, go watch Signs and Symptoms of Low Transmission Fluid. It might not be the sensor at all. If the car starts shifting like it just learned how to drive, jerking, skipping gears, or getting stuck, it's probably because the computer's flying blind. No speed signal means no smooth shifting. Cruise control stops. Working. Hit the cruise button and nothing happens, or it kicks in and then shuts off randomly. The cruise system depends on speed data. No data, like no cruise. Check engine light. Codes like PO500 or PO720 will often show up. The car knows it's not getting proper speed info and throws a warning. You'll need a scan tool to confirm, but this is a strong clue. Pro tip, if you're into the geeky side, check out our video on eight symptoms of a bad speed sensor, causes and fixes, for deeper code explanations. Speedometer freaking out, bouncing needle, wrong speed, or maybe it's just dead. That's your output speed sensor messing with your dash. Most modern cars depend on it for speed readings, bad MPG and overheating transmission. Shifting at the wrong times burns more gas, and since the transmission's overworking, it starts heating up. Keep ignoring it, and you're heading toward expensive territory. So, what actually kills a speed sensor? Wear and tear. They don't last forever. 100k miles is about their lifespan. Electrical gremlins, loose wires, bad grounds, blown fuses, any of these can kill the signal. Physical damage. They're low on the car and can get whacked by debris or potholes. Contamination. Dirt, fluid, salt. All bad news if it gets inside. Mods without recalibration. Bigger tires or gear swaps? That throws off calibration and sensor accuracy. Not sure if it's your torque converter or the transmission causing problems? Don't worry. We explain it all in our video, Signs of a Bad Torque Converter versus Bad Transmission. It'll help clear things up fast. All right, let's get back to it. Got a scan tool? Plug it in. Look for codes like PADO500, PS715 for PS722. Next, grab a multimeter. Check for 1. Voltage at the connector, 2. Good ground, 3. And signal output while spinning the wheels or driving slowly. Still unsure? A good mechanic can scope the signal or bench test it with a drill. If it's external and easy to reach, unplug it, remove one bolt, swap the sensor, plug it back in. You can finish in 20 minutes if you're skilled. If it's internal, you'll need to remove the transmission. That's a job for professionals unless you have serious experience. Noted that some sensors can get stuck because of rust. You might need penetrating oil or a drill if it's jammed. Here's what it might cost you. Part, $160-$190. Labor, $120-$170. Total, $280-$360, depending on the labor and car model. OEM parts cost more but usually last longer. Aftermarket might save you now, but cost more later if it fails again. Here's what helps. Avoid deep puddles and dusty roads unless you can clean the undercarriage afterward. Don't tow or haul heavy loads constantly. Heat kills sensors. Get your transmission inspected every 30,000 to 60,000 miles. Recalibrate if you modify tire size or gear ratios. Clean the sensor area when doing other transmission work. A little attention goes a long way. So that's the full scoop on transmission speed sensors. What they do, what goes wrong, how to test and fix them, 
and what it'll run you. If this saved you a trip to the shop, give the video a like, hit subscribe, and check out the other videos I mentioned. Especially if your car's been throwing weird codes or your cruise control just quit out of nowhere. Drop your questions below. I'll do my best to help. Catch you in the next one.